Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Lair by Lair. Today we're going to take a look at making uh, finger joints. So this isn't for a specific project or anything, but I just wanted to take a look at how to uh, take a look at some workflows for making parametric styled uh, finger joints using Autodesk Fusion 360. Um, so if you take a look at finger joints, they're just these connectors that you can use, these that interlocked two pieces of material together. So this could be used for 3D printing or of course woodworking. So if you search in Google, you're going to see just a bunch of uh, woodworking examples of using finger joints instead of actual finger joints. It's, it's kind of funny. So in Fusion, um, I'm going to be making something like this, where it's uh, just a, a cut here. But the cool thing about the cut is that it's parametric and it's very flexible. So I want to change the the the, the tolerances of it. Let's, let's say the thickness. I could double click on a feature and then adjust it, either enter a value or manipulate it like that. And then we got this very flexible thing here, and it's a sketch, so. I set it up so that it's a pattern, so I can just double click and edit um, a piece here. So if I up, up, so if I double click on this piece, for example, not this one, uh, this sketch. If I double click on this, you can see I only have two uh, dimensions set to it. So if I want to make these a little bit longer, let's say 10, I just update that, and then I hit stop sketch, and then my all of my all of my work is is updated. That's really cool. It's a really flexible way to do it. So to set this up, I'm going to start with a new document, and I'm just going to make a box here. I'll click on this area, and it, it's sort of arbitrary for me, but it's obviously going to matter for you guys. So I'm going to say, let's make it 50 by 150, and uh, hit OK. And then for the thickness, I'm actually going to book 5. And when you're doing uh, a 90 degree connector like that, you want to know, you want to keep in mind what your thickness is. So my connector should be about 5 millimeters in, in as a distance, or as a, yeah, as a distance, the connector size. So now I got my piece of wood. Uh, one thing, if you guys want to know how I made it look like wood, uh, if you right click on an object and go to appearance, you have a bunch of materials to work with. I'm going to pick uh, oak and then just drag it and drop it onto the, the, to the solid. And now we have that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on the, the tool, our little tool path. So to do that, I'll click on the line tool and then I'll select this grid because we want to work on this top down. And I'll start drawing it out. So. Um, I'm not sure where the middle is. It should be about 75 since we made it 150. Um, oh, we can just roll over like this and find the midpoint. So from there, so I'm going to come down here and say I want uh, 5, 90, that's fine. Click, and then from here is also 5, and then down 5, and then back over here to 5. And we only need to do this four times. So um, we got a couple of constraints already set for us. We got the center, so it's always in the center. And we got these little guys here, which mean per perpendicular. So these are always perpendicular to each other. And we have a degree here of 90. Um, but if you wanted to add more uh, sketch dimensions, you could do that. You can say sketch dimension, and just click on this guy. And sit uh, 5, hit OK. And one thing, we don't have any set here, but since we're going to make a pattern of this whole group, uh, we should use the equal uh, constraint. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to say this guy should always be equal with this guy. And then vice versa, this guy always equal with that guy. So that way when we modify something, let's say we say, and hit escape to get out of the equal. If we want to make this 10, it'll just know to be 10 because it's, it's got that constraint set to it. It's got that rule. So that's cool. And if I want this to be 10, I could do that as well. So I'll undo that. We want to keep it at 5 all the way around. So now at this point, we have a bunch of rules set up. So what we can do now is, is, is duplicate this, but not duplicate. We're going to smart duplicate it, right? So that's go under sketch, click on rectangular pattern, and then we're going to select our four sketches here, our four lines. And then I'm going to change the distance type to spacing because we know our spacing. We can use these arrows to drag this to copy, to drag the copies around. We, we know we want a spacing of 10 millimeters. We don't know how many quantities. So I'm going to bring back the piece of wood and then just start clicking this until we have enough to work with. So I think six is fine. I'll hit OK. I think that's good. So now that's pretty much our tool, or, our, or the path that we want. And if we ever want to modify the uh, the pattern, we can we can we can double click on this little icon that resembles the, the rectangular pattern. So we can modify this. All the values are still there and modifiable. And um, that's good to know if we ever need to change it. So we can change all this stuff here. 
All right, so now that it's set up, let's go ahead and start cutting this away. So if we were to cut this now, we could say let's split body and use this as the tool. It's going to be exact, and when you're 3D printing, uh, you kind of want to have a little bit of tolerance to, to make them so that they so that you don't have to like file them down, right? So we can we can extrude this out, make a thickness of it, and then that's going to be like our tolerance gauge. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll need to go into the patch workspace so I'll click on model patch and then under create you'll see extrude so extrude and under a patch lets you extrude things without any thickness to it so that's perfect for this so I'm gonna just uh, click on the top here and then just do a marquee selection of these guys so I don't have to select them all you can see I didn't select them all still so I'll select that like that and that's everything selected and then I can use this arrow tool to extrude it out uh, as long as it's, you know, uh, bigger than our thickness of our material, we should be good. 50 is fine. Hit OK. And now I have a bunch of bodies here. So a bunch of bodies. Um, the, so the thing we want to do is we want to thicken this out. So to do that, I'm going to click on Create and say Thicken. And then I can select our bodies here. I'll hold down Option to, to make a group selection. I clicked all those. And now, by default, it's already added. Um, it's already added a thickness, but I can still modify it. But I'm gonna leave it at 0.2 because I think that's pretty good. And I'll hit OK. All right, so that's looking good now. And we have our solid body. That's gonna be used as our tool. So I'm gonna open up the the wood thing, open it up, just <laughs> reveal it again, unhide it, show it. And now we can use the split body command. So I gotta go back to from patch. I'll go back to model. And then I'll hit under modify, you'll see this thing called split body, but I have it hit it up here. You can you can add these by clicking on those, add to toolbar. But mine's already up there, so I can click on that. What body would I like? The piece of wood. And my tool is gonna be this guy here, the gray thing. Oops, not that, but the whole thing. You see how you can sp pick specific faces? We want the whole thing, so just roll over until you got the whole thing. All right, so that's looking okay. Now I'll hit okay. <laughs> And now we're going to have a couple new bodies created. So I'll hide uh, this guy, which is body 14. And then you'll see we got some the body that was cut. This guy here uh, is, is, is a new body. So we can just remove it by right clicking and hit remove. And now we have our, uh, our two pieces of wood using our, 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 our parametric customizable path. So if I ever need to change the thickness, you can come in here and double click on the thickness uh, feature that we made uh, and the parametric timeline I can update that just like I showed you in the, in, the, in, the, in the beginning of the tutorial like this guy here but I guess what one thing we should do is we should actually move it we should move this guy this piece of wood uh, at a 90 degree so it's perpendicular with the other piece so let's go ahead and hit the move command when you roll over something you'll get uh, sort of a locking you can lock it here for example I kind of want to lock it here so it's in the middle of the connector. So now I can uh, just drag it where I want, like that. You can see it's intersecting, so i got to futz with it a little bit. I push it 2.5, and then back a little bit, something like that. Probably 2.5 as well. 2.5, like that, hit OK. So there you go. There's our, our interlocking box sitting in the exact middle because we uh, we found that midpoint. And there you go. That's pretty that's pretty nice. So if you ever need to modify it, you can of course uh, change the the values that you want. So that's it, guys. Just just a quick little workflow. I think I, that will work for you guys. Hopefully, if you guys have any other um, suggestions or any uh, different workflows, please let me know. I'd love to hear about them. I'll see you guys next week. Uh, but yeah, until then, remember to keep on a cabin. And um, have a good one, guys. Bye.